Welcome to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast, episode 60. Welcome to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast with your host, Jack Mountain Bushcraft School founder and master main guide, Tim Smith. I'm your host, Tim Smith. I'm a registered master main guide, and in 1999, I founded the Jack Mountain Bushcraft School. We help people become more skilled, more knowledgeable, more experienced, and more confident outdoors by using traditional skills, a few simple tools, and field-based experience. Whether you're looking to go from city slicker to competent outdoor professional, want to experience a remote expedition, or just want to learn a few new outdoor skills, we've got you covered. You can check out the show notes to this and all of our podcasts at blog.jackmtn.com. When you're there, click on the podcast button. And if you enjoy the show, please leave us a review on iTunes. Lastly, the best way to keep up with our programs and trips is to join our email newsletter. And you can do that at jmbnews.com. Good morning and welcome back to another episode of the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast. We were on a little bit of a hiatus from recording... uh, podcast but now we're back it is beginning of week two of the spring 2019 wilderness bushcraft semester monday morning christopher and i here are up real early uh in the guide shack drinking coffee doing what we do daily um but yeah we do best what we do best is drink coffee but the uh yeah, spring has sprung in Arusta County after one of the longest winters <laughs> on record. They broke a whole bunch of records this year, like in Caribou, I think, just up the road. It had an inch or more of snow on the ground for the longest period of any year really? ever. Yeah, it started in like that. October, and they <laughs> Didn't just stop. melted. There's still, what is it, May? It's May 6th. And there's still like a couple of feet of snow in shady spots in the woods. Yeah, and some of the trails are still pretty. The yeah. field is clear and all that. But, you know, spring comes late here to yeah. northern Maine. And especially this year. So much. So this year we're running a little experiment that we started the spring semester two weeks later than we have the past few years. Um, and even then, I still, coming down the road, like April, <laughs> what, 27th or something, yeah. there was still a four-foot snowdrift, and I still got stuck <laughs> and had to shovel. So, for those of you in parts further south than the beautiful metropolis of Masardis, realize that up here, winter is long, and when it's not winter, it's either just well, ended or it's just about to start yeah. again. Yeah, oh, and like... Like you said, there's still, you know, almost knee-deep snow in some parts of the woods. But two nights ago, the mosquitoes came out. So it's... World's toughest mosquitoes. I've <laughs> seen, are. I've seen a mosquito trapped in a block of ice. It melts. The thing shook off its wings, flew up and bit me. It was just laughing. World's toughest. <laughs> they're, they're brutal. <laughs> so we're just about into... Uh, we were talking yesterday. We're just about... Uh, into the season of dancing up here uh-huh. the, when the bugs come out and they're real bad you never stand still so it looks like you're doing some kind of wacky you know yeah. 80s exercise movie. black fly boogie yeah because you're moving around <laughs> constantly and then we'll have smudge pots and all that yeah. on the go but but you know to look out this morning it's crystal clear blue sky it's warm we're looking out at the pond saw some brook trout rising last night they made it through the winter we're yeah. happy about that um yes, we are yeah, and it's been kind of like a wildlife park here the first few days. We've both seen the mink running yeah. around on the stream. Um, there's tons of beaver sign all over yeah, the place. Everywhere. I saw a muskrat in the pond. So, yeah, life is slowly returning to the frozen north. And yeah. we're happy for it. <laughs> no kidding. I'm happy to be back. Like, uh, life just makes sense here to me. You yeah. know, like the camp routines, living off the grid. Off grid, off pipe life. It's where it's at. I I totally agree. Nothing to, very few things to break. You know, very few annoying little uh, doohickeys that you have to call somebody to come and fix. <laughs> unlike the modern world where that seems to be con- a near constant. Yeah. But, um, so other current events. So uh, the the library cabin. It's in a pretty wet spot here. 
So every winter, one might say that <laughs> every winter the ground will heave when the moisture underneath it freezes, and we know that li- water, as it goes from a, sol- a liquid to a solid, will expand. So that he- it heaves the cabin, and then when the snow melts, it usually sags. So essentially, we have to level that thing twice a year, every year. Yep. Right. So last fall, uh, I in my uh, trying to demonstrate the uh, power of unintended consequences, decided, hey, you know what I'll do? I'll put the jack. We've got a big railroad jack that we have a plate welded to to make it really easy to level buildings and things. So I said, oh, I'll just put the jack in the cab. And that way in the spring when we need it, it's right here. And then the then what happened, Tim? And, and then, then the cabin, uh, <laughs> it heaved so badly we couldn't get the door open. So I had to call a friend of mine from town who who I learned about uh, Jack and buildings up from to come out and help us because my Jack was trapped in the building. So uh, yeah, never doing that again. Um, you know we've it, it, we've never had it heave so badly we couldn't get the door open. So I obviously wasn't planning on that, but it was pretty annoying was... knowing that to get the building leveled to get the door open, I had to get in the door to get the Jack. So a little bit frustrating. Yeah. Uh, but this spring, this semester, we have digitized our entire assessment system. Um, so as a result of that, we've rebuilt a uh, off-grid solar electric system for the library cabin so people can charge their devices in order to keep logbooks and, and you know do all the other assessment things that we do here. Yeah. Um, and so far, that's been fantastic. Uh you know, obviously digital, it's great being able to make little changes or fix typos that, you know, when you print out a whole bunch of stuff, you just can't do yeah. or you can't do until the next year because it's a big, you know, production to, to print everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so far, so good on the semester. Um, what what else about yeah. that? I guess the uh, we've got the, the big dome up in Moose Vegas. The yeah, Jack the Vegas dome casino. and they're, they've uh, already kind of made the like cook area their own they've got tarps up they're kind of in the full swing of it um i walked up there yesterday and there were i don't know it was kind of cool it was just i I see it every semester but you walk up and there's somebody's cooking another there were other people stripping cedar bark and making cordage and splitting wood and it's just it's just a little it's funny how quickly it becomes a little community up there yeah a, a functioning camp yeah and you have changed your living oh, uh, I have upgraded this year. Drastically. Christopher is now living adjacent to the Bob Wagatorium, mm-hmm. which is a tiny little like six foot by six foot cabin. <laughs> Not in the wag. I, I joke all the time about how bad my life would have to be for me to sleep in the wag. Um, until we put in the skylight. Until we put in the skylight and the hot tub. And the hot tub. Um, but yeah, so I've been clearing out a bunch of the... Um, there's a ton of down trees from the winter and clearing all those out and lopping up the brush and yeah, it's starting to get downright homey down there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the last podcast we recorded was with Blake here. Uh, yeah. When we had just pulled the skidoo out of the snow. Well, so the earlier Tim was talking about getting stuck here on his way in for the spring semester is the exact same spot for our loyal listeners. The exact same spot that the grand touring was stuck. Well, one of the 400. <laughs> well, I guess, that, I guess that's true. If it got stuck every like four feet, there's yeah. a pretty good chance you'll get stuck in one of those spots. <laughs> yeah. So we may have to uh, upgrade the, the snowmobile around here for next, for next winter. We'll see. That'll be a developing story that we'll keep you abreast of. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But since then, uh, what was that? Since then, we did the Boreal Snowshoe Expedition, the Winter Woodsman. Those wolves were great this year. Tons of snow here this past winter, like yeah. like literally five feet of snow in the, in the woods. Um, you know, thankfully, it wasn't so deep on the lakes and on the river, so we could actually get around a little bit. But it was still the deepest snow I've encountered here, um, which, you know, made travel even just going for a walk was just a lot more work than yeah. than normal with with snowshoes and still sinking a couple of feet in you know it just makes for hard work um but anyway that's mostly melted now yeah and then i since then i ran a program at the new hampton school in new hampshire um which was a really fun week they do a sort of uh the students have a week where they get to pick up from a bunch of different 
projects for that week and some of them went snorkeling and all sorts of other fun stuff and for some reason a couple of the kids decided that they would rather not go to somewhere warm in the middle of winter and go hang out in the woods with me for the <laughs> it's sort of a spring break yeah yeah um like pre-spring break they go and do this kind of stuff and yeah but a couple of kids and some of the teachers there decided to hang out and learn how to make winter fun and it was yeah it was a good time Especially for these people that lived there all the time and had no idea how easy it is to be comfortable in the winter time, rather than winter being something you just kind of suffer through until spring gets here. Yeah, that's yeah. always a cool thing for me to see with students. And I think it's always super rewarding to go to someone's place where they live and then work with them, and as a result, they see their home environment through new eyes. Absolutely, right? They see all the different resources they hadn't noticed before. They see you just see things in a different light. Yeah. So it's different. Like if I jump on a plane and went to Antarctica, you know, for a month mm-hmm. or something, then when I get back here, I'll be could tell you about all the cool things I did in Antarctica. But you know, when you go to them, yeah. when you're at their place, then those resources are still there, and they continue to see it differently and i think that's super i totally agree and they used to they used to run a program that was sort of like ultralight winter backpacking and one of the the teachers that ran this program with me um was the one who ran that and um so he had he had a, a fair amount of being out in winter but it was a totally different mentality to being out in winter and i think i think he and the other teacher got as much out of it as the students did just because there's so much um, that people just don't think about as an option. Yeah. Well, that's cool. What yeah, a great, a uh, what a great week. Yeah. Good winter. I'm glad it's over, but good winter. Yeah. Yeah. Glad it's over. Glad to be back up here, uh, doing what we do, right? Yeah. Like the, the longer I spend in town or, or at home or something, just the more sense the woods life makes to me. Oh yeah, like you, I just see all of the ridiculousness and you know chasing after things you don't want or need or you know, and it's just so busy now. It's it's so like the world seems to be busier and busier. Yeah, and I've I've been thinking about that a little bit, and I'll probably at some point write a blog post about it. But I was thinking the other day about how at the end of every day here, I feel like I've accomplished so much. But if you actually like took the tasks I've done, um, it's probably the same number. You know, just just even like making coffee or everything around here takes a little extra effort. And but because it takes that extra effort at the end of the day, I'm tired and I feel like I've really accomplished stuff rather than, you know, back in the modern world. I can do all the same things and I can do all of them in like 20 minutes. And then, well, now what do I do for the rest of the day? Well, you got to work for 60 hours a day to afford the conveniences. Oh, that give you that that's extra time. right. That's what it was. <laughs> that's what it was. But yeah, I love that. Like, I love that there's a visual or like a a viable result of the work I do up here. Like even cleaning up down by my camp at the end of the day, I could look and see a difference because of the physical work I'd put in as opposed to, I don't know, some of the modern world doesn't really feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be, it's an interesting ongoing experiment. It seems like every year I have less and less interest in the modern world. So we'll see if I just become a hermit and well, yeah, on the the Bob Wag trajectory was, to be well. Here speaking of the Bob Wag, I hear there's an open bunk in the Wag. <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you're if you're interested, it's dark. It's kind of damp in there, but you know, tell me less. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah. So today we're yeah. Let's stop talking about winter. Yeah. Today we're gonna break into. Students are going to car- start carving canoe paddles, and then we're going to get them get them in boats for the first time today. Yep, we'll be is... out on Grand Lake Sam Squanch. Yep, do an intro to polling, and it's nice because the water is still you know it's like one degree above cold. freezing. It's freezing, it's so, so cold. <laughs> it's going to be sunny and seventy degrees here today, uh, but you know there is that. Pay attention, or you're going for a swim, yeah. and it probably won't be pleasant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it. Uh, myself and one of the other students were in the water yesterday, and it was. I don't know what the reverse version of a sauna is, but that's what it felt like. Like really fast immersion into cold, and then just like I wanted to be out as quick as I was in. Yeah, take your breath away. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> pins and needles on your legs as you're walking in. Yeah, worth it. Felt good, but I don't want to do it right now. 
Yep, so we'll be starting the canoe paddle carving process. We always start that with a, a nice discussion about sharpening. You know, if it's life lived by hand and you're using hand tools, sharpness is everything. Yeah. So to try to to try to try tackle a project like that with dull tools is not only awful and tedious, but uh, probably more... There's more potential danger to the Absolutely. to the canoe paddle because you'll have to put more force into it and um, just wouldn't be as good. So yeah, we'll sharpen tools, draw out some paddles, and start start the wood removal process. And it's always a fun one. Um, you know, it's our first big project we usually do during the semester, so it's always a nice reality check for people. Um, you know, to figure out where they're at and to sort of a, I don't want to say like a gut check, but it's like a, you know, it's, it's a lot more challenging to take on big projects than yeah. it is to take on tiny projects. And especially, I mean, some of these, some of the students that come up here, they, you know, only a week ago, they had never held an ax or a knife in their lives, you know, for, for working with wood. And now we're turning them loose on, on a canoe paddle that they're going to use to transport themselves around for the next eight weeks. Yeah. And that's, that's a big thing. Um, and I, I think that by the end of it, most people, that's a pretty, I don't know. If you, I think if you get the, get your hands around making a, get your head around making a canoe paddle, that's a super empowering thing as we move forward with other big projects. Like, because it is, it's the biggest one we do, I think. And the beauty of it is, you know, sort of the, the, the secret method of our, educational philosophy is you build your own paddle then you use it to travel yeah. around for the rest of the course so you know if you do a crappy job or whatever if the resulting paddle's no good you have no one to blame but yourself mm -hmm. um, which is usually a really good motivator for people to do a good job and put in a lot of time and well the really good motivator is when we pull out the moose mallet and show them that because <laughs> nobody wants to paddle with that thing <laughs> i think oh, we've told that story like six times on the podcast here and if you're care. listening that if paddle listening, will live here forever yes it will <laughs> it's never going anywhere <laughs> when i get here i check all the buildings are all the buildings aren't down and then i make sure the moose mallet hasn't disappeared <laughs> that's my priorities yeah so we've got that going for us. Yes, we do. Which is nice. Um, yeah, well, let's uh, just a couple other current events because this is the first one in a while. Still space on our summer programs. We've got a summer woodsman and a riverman uh, canoe guide training course coming up this summer. And you've got, what do you have going on? Uh, the month-long wilderness immersion for teens. Um, that'll be, yeah, that'll be running as well. Still space for that. It'll be a lot. It's a smaller version of the semester built so teens can do it during summer break. Cool. So, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Well, we're planning to get back into the swing of things and record these things more regularly now. Uh, so, yeah, look for them. It, you know, once a week we'll get back into the swing of doing it like that. Now that we've headed back to the, to the field school, we're mm -hmm. all back home. Um, so, yeah, look for those. Um, so, yeah, thanks for listening. Yep, take uh, care. And if you found this podcast to be useful, share it with somebody or leave us a review wherever you listen to these. So thanks, and we'll catch you later. You have been listening to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast. For more information on our professional wilderness guide training programs that are college accredited and GI Bill approved, visit us on the web at jackmtn.com.